Okay. I think that we are live and I'm starting a little early tonight just to make sure that everything works. And I will remember, I promise, to check the comments. I see a couple people on. I see Lauren. Hi, Lauren. So i um, waiting for a few more people to come in and then we will get started. I'm just making sure we're all good to go and then I will start. I can't believe that this is, um, hi Lauren. <laughs> if I was way more tech savvy, I'd know how to respond back, but I don't wanna do that and risk like everything blowing up. So um, we are a little early and I will tell you that all the um, all the beautiful, fantastic decorations held up. So we're very excited about that. I'm just waiting for the fabulous May Cobb to join in. So she'll be here shortly. I cannot believe that this is the third episode of Top Shelf Live at Merrick Library, the Thrill Fest edition. And uh, as you're joining me, I'm welcoming everyone to the last episode of 2023 for Thrill Fest. So I'm waiting for more people to come in, get yourself comfortable, get yourself a little beverage, and we'll be good to go shortly. So I am gonna get started. As I said, this is episode three of Top Shelf Live at Merrick Library, our Thrill Fest edition. This is our last episode of Thrill Fest, and I, all of you who have been with us this long, I am so appreciative that you have been here. It has been so much fun. The direction, the directions, the uh, all the decorations held up fine. It's been a long month, and those decorations held up. So, kudos to all those people involved. And I will take a quick moment now, waiting for May Cobb to join. Um, to thank all of the people who do the behind the scenes work because you guys are amazing. And I specifically want to say that my standard line is Thrill Fest has been brought to you by two amazing behind the scenes people. And I want to thank the incredible Michelle Craddock for directing, for the graphics, and to Billy Falcon for all kinds of technical assistance, for the last minute assists on all kinds of things technical decorations, everything, you name it, the lighting, the iPad, it's, it's, it takes a village. That's all I will say. Also, thanks to director Dan Chusmere and assistant director Diane Bondi and the Merrick Library Board of Directors for getting us here and helping us to ensure our success. So, um, today's guest, as soon as she pops in, is going to be May Cobb. And May Cobb has written, what can I say about May Cobb? She is the thriller woman. She writes summer thrillers that are steamy and thrilling. And as we get into the cool, cool Halloween uh, nights and Thanksgiving nights and November, December, this is the thing that you're gonna need to get yourself all warm because this is the book that will do that for you. So as soon as she joins in, we will start. Um, oh, I see a lot of people are joining. Hello, I see somebody specific. And hello, Carrie, look at you. Mwah. Hi, E, love you. So tonight's episode is the third one, as I said, and we'll be hosting May Cobb. We're just waiting for us to join May Cobb writes the last two books she has written have sort of landed right smack in the middle of your summer and man even with the air conditioning on you will not believe how steamy things get in these books but there's also murder and mayhem and all sorts of things like that so 
as soon as she pops in. And we're going to be talking about all of the things that we love to talk about, some horror things, some thriller things, and et cetera. So I'm pretty excited to talk about that. We've had an amazing group of guests that have been on. We had three, like I said, the third episode, our first guest that we started doing this with was the incredible Wanda Morris. And let me just tell you, she, we, she just announced this week, follow her on Instagram, but she just announced this week that her first book will be made into some type of a movie. And I'm very excited for her. A lot of you who are following along now, you all know how much I love Wanda. I've interviewed her on the podcast twice. I mean, anytime I can get um, to chat with her, I'm thrilled to host her. So that was our first guest, Wanda Morris. And then last week, we had the dynamic duo of James and Jordan Wade. So that was amazing because they talked about all kinds of things, all their horror favorites, which was really, really fun. One of the things that James uh, and Jordan both talked about were two fantastic movies, um, Prey and X. Let me tell you folks, those are tough. Excellent, excellent and tough. So let's see. Oh, and we talked about James Wade's book, Beasts of the Earth, which just came out the middle of this month and it is terrific. It takes place in Texas. And if you like all things Texas, obviously I have a thing for Texas. So we, um, the book is great. So I would suggest reading that. We talked a little bit of football, some of our favorite horror short stories. And I love that they talked about their horror short stories because they are parents and they've got a little one at home. And, you know, sometimes you gotta take your, you gotta take your reading in short bursts and short little bites, pardon the expression. So they talked a lot about that too. You can find all of those back episodes on our YouTube page and I'll, I'll pop a link in um, somewhere in here and we can talk about that. So, like I said, we're just waiting for May Cobb to join us and I haven't seen her pop in yet. Hey, May, all right, let me, let me invite you in there, May. Hang on a sec. Okay, let's see if she can pop in. Hey, May, you did I'm it. so sorry, are you ever gonna forgive me? Oh, first of all, Anybody who's watching right now, you must see the person on the screen with me is the May Cobb. Not just May Cobb, the May Cobb. I adore this woman. I cannot even tell you how much since her first book. Um, May, I am so glad to see you. And I, I'm sorry for any inconvenience. I'm, so, I'm just so glad you're here. Well, thank you for being patient. I can't believe out of all days, this is the day that the things out of my control, take over, and uh, I don't know, mom life. Oh my gosh, Wanda's here. Hey, Wanda. Yes, Wanda! <laughs> hey, happy pub week, Wanda. Yay, Wanda, uh, happy pub week. <laughs> yeah. We're ready to read. Oh, my friend Suzanne's joining us. Suzanne, come on, join the party. Bring something if you have it. I'm just mm -hmm. saying. Mm-hmm. And if you don't, you, you have guys in the back, you guys can run back to your fridge and grab something really quick. Wanda has had an amazing week. She was our first guest on Thrill Fest, as I said, way, way at the top of the uh, half hour. I was so, and she's got such amazing news to share about her book and the movie treatment and all of these things. So Wanda, mwah, let yes. me moon. Yes, that. Wanda, I hope you could hear me like squealing all the way from Texas with everything. <laughs> Hiding. And anyone who was with us for Thrill Fest episode one, Wanda Mars is in the chat. Please take a moment and just follow her because her Instagram is terrific. It's amazing. Yes, we will. So the one and only, hey Cobb, I have been extolling the virtues of this book for 20 minutes. Oh my God, I'm so sorry I'm that late. No, but uh, I mean, it was easy. Because uh, Wanda says she loves you, May. <laughs> Love her. I mean, we're all, like we all need Wanda T-shirts, <laughs> like, <laughs> or this cover on our T-shirts. Like this is this is amazing. May, I'm gonna just turn things over to you for a little bit. Sure. Just give everyone who 
did not get the steamy summer thriller note about this book. So My Summer Darlings is about three lifelong best friends, uh, women, and they are uh, living back in their small insular East Texas town. They're in their late 30s, kind of approaching like perimenopause craziness. And over the course of a summer, this handsome stranger moves to town and he moves into one of the bigger mansions in the neighborhood. And each of the three women are at a different crossroads in their life. And he, each one of them becomes obsessed with him and brings ruin and drama and sex and murder and just... Just all the East Texas crazy stuff. I, is uh, East Texas really like that? I mean, I feel like we need a, a Real Housewives of East Texas. Yeah, it's funny. I really do I tone it down a little bit for the book. So it's it's even more amplified. And uh, uh, yeah, so, so we have Kitty's the main character and she's like socialite, but it's fears that her best days are behind her and that her beauty's fading. And she's kind of in a toxic thing with her teenage daughter, Chloe, because she sort of wants to look like Chloe and have that body again. So they have a weird ass dynamic, sorry. And then we have um, Cynthia, who's more of the sort of like repressed housewife. Mm -hmm. And then Jen, who is recently divorced, her heart's been broken, her husband cheated on her. And she's sort of sworn off men and wants to go on a sabbatical. And then, of course, Will Harding, the villain and object of their desire, moves into town. Um, yeah. So, so I shared at the top that a couple of things. Two things. What the first line in Chapter 1, which I talked about with you on the podcast, and I think I actually posted it somewhere. I, maybe I made it a Sunday sentence. I don't know. That first sentence, you set the hook in chapter one, not the, not the piece that comes before that. I heard him before I saw him. He arrived in the middle of a hot, balmy morning a week ago today, the low rumble of his 1967 Chevy pickup sneaking around the block. He slowed his truck and rounded the bend in front of my house. And did he wink at me? And there's so much more I'm leaving out because I want everyone else to get there on their own. But that begins the tale. And I, I don't know how you come up with a sentence like that. You're so sweet. Stop. <laughs> but Thank who, you. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. It's amazing. And what I love is Riley Sager had this to say. He said, that My Summer Darlings is a potent cocktail of desire and deceit, spicy enough to make you sweat until the suspense chills you to your core. I mean, all of that is 100% true. And it is the, even though this is steamy summer reading, it's perfect. New York is starting to finally get cold again. And although the humidity, as you can tell from my hair, was very high. Um, yeah. So I can't stop what's happening right now, but it's Halloween. Maybe I love people it. will. I love it. <laughs> maybe people will think it's a costume. Um, it is perfect for your book club because one of the things that I love about your writing is that you bring the inner lives, the inner voices of these women, these moms and you wrap their stories around the thriller. I don't know how you do that. I don't know how you plot all of that, but we talked about in the podcast how you bring these women to life, the secrets that they're keeping from each other, the secrets they don't even want to admit to themselves. They say one thing, um, but we know they're thinking something else. We know there's something else going on there. I don't know how you prepare as a writer that inner dialogue for each one of them. I don't know how you do that. So this was this was fun to write because for like the Hunting Wives, I was just in, and that's that's the book before this one for people who don't know me. Um, I was just in one character's point of view. I love that uh, the whole time. And so, hey, Ramona, 
And my friend Richard's here. Oh my gosh, the gang's all here. Hi guys. <laughs> Love it. Um, and uh, so, so writing in from one point of view is nice, but I was really ready to try to push myself to do something different. So I wanted to do the three different points of view. And I, um, I don't do a whole lot of like planning ahead of novels, but I did do some little small character sketches of the women just well because my freelance editor I work with made me <laughs> normally never um and and then from there it's just can I hear their voice in my head can I feel what they're feeling and thank god it happened for all three and the minute that happens like I'm, I'm off and running and not to say that I don't ever you know experience writer's block or slow days or slow weeks and think oh God, does this whole thing need to go in the garbage but if if i can tune into a character's voice then that's my way into a story above above anything else so i you know that's like it's amazing it's amazing and i because i kind of stalk you a little bit on instagram full disclosure i saw i stalk you too <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm way less interesting, but thank you. But I saw a manuscript um, cover for something. Would you like to share that with the viewers? Sure. Well, uh, are you talking to me about, about like my next one, A Likeable Woman? Yes, please. Yeah. So that's going to come out. We have a pub date of July 11th. 2023 i'm so excited i've i've usually pubbed in may and i'm mm -hmm. excited to have a, like a true summer right you know it's going to be a thousand degrees in texas and i can't wait to reveal the cover it's very summery um and it's so it really is it's it it's it's got the salacious stuff of my other ones but it is sort of a more emotional like it kind of gutted me parts to write mm. and it's about a 30 something woman who uh ever since she was 15 has been told her mother killed herself she never believed it because her mom and her were so close her mom was an artist like kind of a rebel in her neighborhood bohemian little art shed in the back in this like east texas suburb kind of a renegade free thinker and really ahead of her time. And, um, and her daughter just thought, no, we had too much of a bond. She would not end her life, but everyone in her family, everyone in the town, yes, she killed herself. So she fled, she never returns, but then she gets a vow renewal invitation to a frenemy's vow renewal <laughs> back in home. And her rich paternal grandmother says in a text, there's something of your mother's, something she was keeping in secret that I want to finally give to you. And I actually believe you're right about the way she died. And so she goes back to investigate. And then she, of course, starts to get in danger herself. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a book within a book. So the mother left behind. And, and that's not giving it away because it's on the cover copy. Right. I was going to say, I think we talked about that. Yeah. Yeah, so and, and so the mother's story is going to start and it's it's going it's, to, it has clues in it. And so she's got to read it and also like attend this thing that she doesn't want to be at. But her right. childhood boyfriend's back home. He's got a wife and she's kind of a bitch. But anyway, so it's like a hot mess. <laughs> Listen, after this and then this, I am not going to be able to wait till July. <laughs> Hopefully you won't have to. I hope. I <laughs> Early yeah for sure <laughs> so we'll see what we'll see you i love those galleys love when they come my way yeah. um i know that you have also recently shared some thriller movies that you've been watching anything you i love that you shared that because you tell some of the viewers about that yeah um gosh the latest sort of like horror film that my husband and I watched and I thought it was so great was uh Black Phone. Uh it's so yep. great. have you seen it? I have in fact I used it. I said that it was what <laughs> yeah, great minds. Yeah. Wasn't it great? It's so great. Um uh Robert Cargill is the writer director I believe, right? And yep. 
he interestingly enough lives in Austin and oh gosh I didn't yeah, know that yeah I don't I don't know him at all but um I go to um my friend Owen Edgerton who is a horror director and great yep. he has a one-page salon every month okay. and uh it's going to be next Tuesday and Robert's going to be there reading he's also a novelist so I'm super excited about that but yes I loved Black Phone I loved um uh uh, Owen's actually the one that said you should that I should watch it. He said it reminded him a little of Big Woods. And then when I watched it, I was like, oh, yeah, with like the dreams and the 80s thing and the missing. Um, I mean, different, very different. Right. Still like, um, yeah. Right. I, like I was talking about this at the top, just so I you know. You have that. That's so cool. Um, <laughs> and let's see. So horror books, I, I did start watching The Watcher this week. Have you mm -hmm. seen that? Yeah, I haven't watched that yet because I'm kind of obsessed with. Okay, yes, yes, I want to see that too. Because I've been living here for a little while. Yeah, yeah. is it great? Uh, listen, I think it is steamy and terrific and scary, and I love everything about it. Okay, okay, I'm gonna watch it then. I can't wait. Um, I so for books, I have been really wanting to read Eric Laroca's. Or La Rocca. I'm not really sure. Things oh, have gotten worse since we last spoke. Do you want to know something so funny? I just oh, started his oh, June book. How oh, great oh, is that? Shout okay. out to Eric. Well, he's so prolific that I can't like keep up. And uh, and I was just up in Connecticut with him, and we did a panel together. And he's oh. so lovely and so wonderful in person. And um, Gabino Iglesias was raving about this. We got stuck in the airport together, and he told me <laughs> like got like. Like email back and forth, yeah. May, you're in my head, May. No, you're in my head because we didn't talk about this before at all. Huh? <laughs> so, so I devoured Gabino's book. I know you loved it too. Um, but man, what a journey! And so dark and beautiful and haunting. And I, I'm a very, I'm a very slow reader. And if I really love a book. I'll either, so I'm dragging out a book right now and I couldn't put my hands on it because it's, it's, it's over there on my bedside and I'm almost done. And it's, um, you're good, you're good. it's, uh, it's, um, it's EAI Mars. It's, it's going to come out in February and it's, it's no home for killers and it's great. And it's so oh. written and there's so much going on that I have, I've been savoring, savoring, savoring. Right. And Gabino's is so, so, so I do two things with books. I either savor it, underline the line, study, then go beat myself up because I'm not a good writer. And I wish oh. I that's what I'm doing with his book. And then when I read Gabino's, because I moderated his book launch, like I literally, like, I don't know where my family was for two days. <laughs> I, it, I was totally consumed and I had, had to know what was going to happen. And oh my God, I just, I, I love it, love it, love it. Want it, uh, wants it to be a movie so bad. Oh my I, gosh, it is perfect. It's, but you know what? So is so is my summer darlings. I mean, this has this has movie all over it. Well, I hope you think some good thoughts. I uh, nothing yet on that front, so we'll see what happens. But uh, I yes, I I'm gonna put that out into the universe, May. Please do, please do. <laughs> I would even love to like take a stab, no pun intended, at like adapting it for like a limited series, like sort of like a really dirty, desperate housewives. <laughs> exactly. The stabbing, the backstabbing. I've got four books and I'm sure you have them too. So Rachel Harrison's Such Party. I haven't started it. I've heard amazing things. Okay. Yeah. I'm dying, dying, dying to read this. Can yep. I also met her in Connecticut. Lovely. But uh, yes, uh, you know, werewolf book. Um, it's been getting all the praise. I. How could you? I mean, it's a werewolf book. We don't have enough of those. No, I like no. and that, all the werewolf stories. Yes, the cover. And and I just, I love Rachel Harrison. I love the return. I love Cackle. Her writing. Yeah, that was gorgeous. great. She's an amazing storyteller. Just also terrifying. Um, and then finally, I'm really, really wanting to read uh, Paul Tremblay's latest. Paul Bears. Have you read it? Yeah. Okay. It's, 
It's very, I don't want to say, you go in blind. I don't want to say anything. It's okay. great. I mean, it's Paul Tremblay. I mean, what, yeah. He mixes things up every book. He's constantly like shape shifting. And I don't know how he does that. And, you know, we all just, we all just sit there and wait for the book. And then we read it. And we're like, it's great. You know? Well, and that, it, it was, it was crazy. Cause when I was in, yes, he totally does. And I don't know how he does it either. And I'm in awe and, and just like peeking at this one, I was like, oh my God, this is another one of those like, you know, what is going on with the kind of the book within the book thing. And oh man, there is a, there are a couple of scenes in that book that I had to turn my flashlight on to use the restroom in the middle of the night. Really? I wasn't going to go in the dark. Really? I believe it. I, I, was, wait. I was scared. Oh, okay, he's, cool. Yeah. Well, and, and he's got a movie coming out, right? Yes. And I think January. Um, yeah. Shine a lot. How are you say his last name? I'm right. Full, uh, today because my brain is scrambled. But yes, he he adapted it, and the trailer looks amazing. So amazing. I, I can't wait. I want to be there on opening day. I'm like excited. <laughs> um, but yeah, Paul and Rachel and Gabino and Eric actually they were all up at at um, Story Fest. I'm so mad I missed that. I'm so mad I missed that because well, I... next year you have to oh come. My. Yeah. Because it's like an hour for Yep, you. it's so close. It's nothing yeah. for me. Yeah. It's really so close. And the, uh, the other where thing. Were then, you? Where were you? I know, sitting on my sofa. I, honestly, if I could have got my car, I would have. I would have come right up there and I would have crashed the party. It would have been Please. amazing. You, so, so come next year. I, I'm not missing it next year. <laughs> it's so great. It's so great. Um, it's such, it's just Alex who puts it on. It's fabulous. It's just such a well-run, really, really cool festival. I love and it. then lastly, I just wanted to plug yes. again this White Horse by Erica T. Worth. Ooh. It's an um, indigenous woman. Um, her mother, she inherits a bracelet. Ooh. And something is really up with this bracelet. Is it haunted? Is it cursed what is going on and there are some shiver me timber moments in this one i will tell you that too <laughs> yeah, that sounds amazing it comes out in, uh tuesday november 1st okay, okay. great oh. I'll pick up for sure i am thrilled to see you i am sorry that i tried to keep things going while we were waiting i hope everything is good with you i cannot wait for your new book i hope that you will come back for whatever comes next. <laughs> Did I lose you? You'll have me back. I was like, when I finally broke to you, I was like, she's, there's no way she's still on. She's probably up there like sharpening a dagger to stick in my back because I'm no! so late. Oh my gosh. Never ever. May, it's you. I, you know how I feel. Come on. Carol Ann. Oh, all right. Be good. Stay safe. Give every tell your family I said thank you for letting me monopolize your time for this time period. I really appreciate it. Joy, it and, so fun. and I thank everybody who has been watching these three episodes of Thrill Fest at Merrick Library's Instagram page. I have had a ball. I am so glad that all of you were here. We will oh, <laughs> Carrie Calvert. He is the best. Carrie is so good to me. Um he is like I said, folks, you gotta follow him because his book recommendations are He's terrific. Also, and yeah, May, you met him, right? You met him in person. Yeah, yeah, twice. Uh, twice. Jealous. Yeah. Totally yeah. jealous. I know. He's such a cool person and just brilliant reviewer. And I couldn't think of a better way to end Thrill Fest than with the fantastic woman you see on the screen with me, May Cobb, the May Cobb. I am <laughs> thrilled that you were here. I'm thrilled that we were able to wrap it up together. Thanks to everybody who was watching. Thanks to all of the behind scenes, the behind the scenes people, uh, Michelle Craddock and Billy Falcon. They have been instrumental in the success with directing and graphics and technical assistance. You guys have no idea. Uh, so I want to thank them and May and um, Wanda and James and Jordan and all the guests that we've had. Um, it's been an honor and I am so thrilled. May, I love you so much.
Love you too. All right. I, oh, yeah. Be good, May. We'll see you soon. Bye, you. everybody. Thank you. Happy Halloween. It's tonight. <laughs>